Now, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you will probably will have realised by now that when it comes to all things technical motorbike, I'm a bit of a technical numpty. However, there are a few things I'm willing to give a try to myself, given the right incentive. And the right incentive in, in this case is a little bit of money saved. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how you go about uh, servicing your motorcycle. I wouldn't uh, personally service a, a really complex motorcycle. That's where I do run out of my... Uh, my skill level, but for something like the little Honda CRF, it's just a single cylinder, very basic motorcycle. It's not beyond uh, my capability to do an oil and filter change on this bike. Uh, the good news is that the servicing on these bikes, pretty much uh, the annual service at least, pretty much is just a lot of inspections and a uh, oil and filter change. Now this bike was MOT'd about three weeks ago, had a really good look at uh, by a professional engineer, so it's been pretty much inspected in terms of the brakes and suspension and everything else. So the, the main thing that it needs by way of a service is an oil and filter change. So that's what I intend to do in this video. OK, so if you do decide to take the plunge and service your bike yourself, the good news is everything you need to know really about what needs to be serviced or changed and inspected will be in your owner's manual. In here, there are complete schedules of what needs changing when. The good news for me is this bike annually um, only needs really an oil and filter change. Um, on odd years, there are extra things to be done, but this year it's a simple oil and filter change, and that's something well within my capability. I've only actually done 600 miles on this since the last oil change, so it probably barely needs doing, but I'm a big fan of keeping the oil nice and fresh. Um, um, so that's what I'm going to do. It's all listed in here, what needs to be done. Um, so it should be hopefully relatively straightforward. What could possibly go wrong? Well, uh, we'll find out, won't we? So uh, if you stick around and stay tuned, I'll show you how that's done. But in the meantime, if you come around here, I'll show you what you need before you crack on. Right then, so what do you need in order to do the uh, filter and oil change on your bike? Well, of course, the obvious things are you need a filter. Hey, <laughs> You need a filter and you need some oil. Uh, the oil I've gone for is this stuff. This is semi-synthetic 10W40, which is pretty standard motorcycle type oil. Uh, when I say semi-synthetic, uh, what I mean by that is it's not fully synthetic. You can get fully synthetic oils, which are very high spec, high grade, but they're also very, very expensive. If you get these, which most motorcycles of particularly this type uh, can use, then it also has uh, some mineral oil in it, but it's perfectly adequate for this sort of machine. And to be honest, rather than agonising over the type of oil, just making sure you've got clean and, and regular oil changes is probably the most important thing. I would say, always go for a known brand though. Motel actually invented semi-synthetic um, motor oil uh, back in the 1960s, so I always trust Motel stuff. So that's what I've gone for there. Then oil filter-wise, I've gone for this. This is a high flow filter. On the CRF, it looks a little bit different to um, some other filters you may have seen, the type that you just screw off uh, in, a, in a metal canister. These you actually get the paper filter and it goes into like a permanent receptacle that you'll have a look at in a minute. So that's that. Uh, I also got some spare washers um, for the little drain cap underneath. It's sometimes good to replace them and also you have a habit of losing them if you're not careful. Uh, the other things you need, very important, some uh, gloves because this is a very messy job, particularly on a bike like this, the oil can go everywhere. So uh, some gloves, overalls of course, you're going to need a funnel to top the oil up. You're going to need something to catch the old oil in. This is uh, Mrs Fly's favourite mixing bowl that I've uh, commandeered from the kitchen. Uh, um, and then last but not least, you're going to need some wrenches, of course. Got a torque wrench for the, uh, for the uh, bolt on the bottom. This is a 12 mil for the CRF. Uh, and then to take the uh, oil filter off itself, got another wrench with a little uh, extendable arm because it gets kind of in the way of the brake lever. So that's pretty much everything you need. Let's crack on. Okay, just before we actually get started with the job, we'll get there in a minute, I promise, uh, it's just worth mentioning a couple of things. One is uh, normally I would warm the bike up to make the uh, oil nice and warm and runny so it runs out the bike nice and easily. In this case, the bike hasn't been anywhere since I had it MOT'd about three weeks ago. It's just been sat in the garage. So the oil will have nicely run out of the cylinder and be sitting in the bottom anyway. So, uh, so I'm just going to let it drain out from that point and I'll give it plenty of time to drain out. So that's number one. And the other thing that it's worth... Uh, just checking before you uh, start to drain the oil, is just have a look at the sight uh, glass on the, uh, on the side of the engine to see how much oil is in the bike. Now this one, I'll, I'll show you this with another shot. Um, you can see it's about half full with the bike in the upright position. The bike's upright at the moment. I've got it uh, pegged so it's upright. So when I come to fill it up again, I'll make sure that the uh, sight glass goes to a similar amount. I know the bike holds uh, about a litre and a half according to the manual, but uh, again, I like to make sure that uh, the sight glass is, is in a similar position. Uh, properly because it's important that uh, not only do you have enough oil in it but you don't want to have too much that's just as damaging to the engine if you don't have enough okay that's it let's get on with it then first job take out that little plug under the bottom okay so that's the uh, fuel drain on the CRF underneath you can see there's a hole in the bash plate and then that's the bolt that we're going to get at to undo to actually let the oil run out so uh, let's do that now okay then so very important to position your drain bowl uh, and this is a 12 mil uh, socket on the CRF if I can get that under there. Right, this can be a very messy old game. 
So let's see. Okay. It's not on there very tight. At any moment now, the mess will begin. There we go. Well, I'm quite surprised actually, as I say, it's only been in there for 600 miles, but uh, it's certainly looking uh, black and horrible, but uh, we'll get that sorted with the new oil. So I'm just gonna let that run out now. I'm gonna leave the bike, I'm gonna go and get a cup of tea, leave the bike for a good half an hour or so um, to drain out. Um, before I go and have a brew though, I will just take off the oil filter as well, just to make sure that all, absolutely everything can drain out. There's no uh, air locks anywhere. And I'll put this somewhere safe in the meantime. Uh, in terms of the amount of oil I'm expecting to come out, According to the manual, it's about uh, a litre and a half that the bike holds. So uh, we'll drain that out and then we'll, then we'll see. It looks like it's slowing down already. Okay, just while that's uh, finishing draining, we'll just take this little cover off here. This is the, on the CRF, this is what covers the, the oil filter. And again, not on there tight by any means. So this is gonna be a messy old game actually, potentially. So let's just get, let's get some newspaper around because I don't want to get oil absolutely everywhere. Although I'm sure that is going to happen to a degree and I'll have a rag ready just in case of any nightmares. All right, so I'm just going around these diagonally to loosen them. And there may well be a little spring in here holding the old paper filter in place. So I want to make sure that uh, I just see how that's located. Okay. Right, that's moving that over. Two. Three. And four. And then just making note of where the spring and everything is. That's where that gets in the way. There we go. So yeah, there's a little spring in the middle there. I want to make sure that goes back. It goes on that way around. Okay. And then there's a little gasket here as well, which we want to make sure obviously goes back on. And then there's the old filter itself. There we go. And uh, actually that looks quite clean. Right, while that's all off, I'm just gonna leave that now for, uh, as I say, 25, 30 minutes to make sure absolutely every last strip of oil is out. I'll give her a bit of a clean up and then we'll put the filter back on, fill it back up. The other thing I think I'll do just before I go in for a brew is just uh, tilt the bike over a bit, take these blocks from the stand and try and encourage a bit more oil out that way. See if we get any more out there. Okay, right, let's give that some time. Alrighty, so here we are, half an hour later. Looks like the oil has pretty much finished running out, so uh, now it's just a matter of uh, propping the bike back up and reversing the procedure. Okay, so uh, first thing then is to fit or refit that very lively uh, oil filter, which is here. So it looks like that. Now then, it appears to go in. What way around did it go in is the question. It's gonna go in that way around. With a little rubber bung on there. It's got the same rubber bung, just make sure it looks exactly the same. Yeah, it's all looking good. Okay, so that's gonna sit in there. There you go. Like so. And then the gasket. Like so. And then the cover itself, making sure that the spring is where it should be. Four. Right, we'll just give those a little tighten. They don't have to be stupidly tight, these. Right, okay, and then just for a last tighten, they were only just hand tight, so just an, oh, about that much, about that much. It's technical torque wrenches. 
that much and that much. Okay, so that's the uh, filter back on. Wipe. Uh, next is the drain plug to go underneath. Okay, so these uh, drain bolts, we've got to remember to put the washer back on again if it's if you've managed to keep it and it's still in good order. Uh, these don't go on very tight at all, as you may have noticed when I took it off. It's basically just hand tight, so I'm just going to find the hole. The old problem. There it is. And just hand tighten that for now. that much and no more okay all right i've still got a little bit more dripping that's what's caught on the on the bash plate unfortunately so i'm just gonna have to clean that up afterwards with the rag but basically that's it done as far as putting the bike back together now what i've got to do is refill it with oil okay so to fill it with oil take the oil filler cap off make use of your funnel there you go and According to the manual, it's 1.4 litres of oil it holds, and looking in here, I can see that, uh, well, who knows, but it looks about 1.4 litres. This uh, holds 4 litres, I believe. Yep, so it's a, bit, a little bit less than half this to go in. So I'll pour in what feels like half, and then I'll check that sight glass. I'm back with the bike up uh, vertical again where I started, and see if we're going to halfway up there where we want it. One more thing. One more. Right, that fills about half the can. And looking at the sight glass now, it's showing me that we're exactly halfway. But of course, all that's happened is we've poured the oil in and it's flooded through the engine and gone to the bottom. What it hasn't done yet is soaked into the oil filter. So what I'll do is just uh, take that out now, have a bit of a tidy up, and then we'll start her up and we'll see where that settles. And I suspect what we'll have to do is just top her up again a little bit, because of course the filter Probably takes, I don't know, a tenth of a litre or something. Okay, let's have a tidy up then. Okay, so I had a little tidy up. Just going to start her up quickly and just check there's no massive leaks. Absolutely fine, can't see any leaks, good news. So there we are, that's the uh, basic service on the CRF 250L completed. Probably took me about half an hour actual work time and probably saved myself uh, 70 quid, say, in the process over taking it to a workshop to get it done. So I uh, do encourage you to have, uh, to have a go at that if you're so inclined, because if nothing else, it just teaches you a bit more about the bike. Don't forget uh, to dispose of your old oil sensibly. I just pour it into one of these uh, massive milk containers uh, and then take it down to the local dump where they have one of those massive oil can things and they get rid of it in a, in a humane way. Um, and the other thing to mention is uh, don't forget just to fill in your service record as well to maintain that. There's nothing to stop you doing that. Just to fill it in to say you've done the oil change, what the mileage was and the date when you did it so you've got uh, a complete service record. Okay, hope that's been of some interest. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Nissan and Flyer. Cheerio.